Good morning. It is good to be back in this place this morning. It is good to see you, whether you are online or whether you are here in the sanctuary. It is good to see you today. We're glad you are worshiping with us. I might need to reintroduce myself. I'm Pastor Laura. I've been away for a couple of weeks, but it is good to be back. Few announcements. The envelopes for giving are out in the narthex. If you continue to give by using one of the envelopes and putting it in the box in the narthex, please feel free to pick up some envelopes. They're packaged in sets of about 12 to 15 if you want to think about giving monthly, or they're packaged in sets of 52 for weekly giving. If you're online or if you miss a Sunday and need to get something back to us, please feel free. Mail in your gift to the church or use our website and give online. Uh, there are multiple ways to do that, but for those of you who, who want to put it in an envelope, please pick up your envelopes. Out in the narthex, there are also Jason's House calendars. Jason's House is an important ministry that this church has been involved in for many years, which brings children and their family, children with cancer, and their families to the beach for a vacation. Uh, we were not able to do this last summer. We don't know what will happen this summer, but we have our calendars. Use it as a reminder to continue praying for those children that we have hosted and that we will host in the future. If you were here last week, Pastor Mary talked about star words, and if you've heard her talking this week and don't know what star words are, you may be a little confused. But they were words that were written on stars that are to guide us as we think about our faith all year long. There's still quite a few that are left on the rail up here, if you will come up after the service and pick one up. It's blank on one side and has the word on the other side. If you are watching online and would like one, please say something in the comments and we'll get one to you. This is a, a great way to keep us focused during the year. My final comment is stay safe. Uh, I have a feeling more of you are hearing people you know of who have COVID or have had COVID. Uh, please take care of yourselves. Remember to wear your masks, wash your hands. And I'm, go I'm going to call this social distancing. Remember to physically distance yourselves. We're not giving up on being community. We are committed to being safe community but keeping our distance. So please keep those things in mind. We are thankful that we can worship both here in person and online. And I invite you to prepare your hearts for worship today.
and join me in the invitation to service. Good morning, and please be seated. Oh, oh, oh. Good morning, and would you please stand and join me in the call to worship. Come, come into the presence of the Lord today. You have been fashioned by God's love. You are called across the waters of creation to be a blessing. You have been called to be people of hope and life. You have been offered nourishment and cleansing by creation's waters. And let us now continue with our opening prayer. Almighty God, parent of all who call upon your name, in the waters of baptism, you have transformed us, marking us as your children and recreating us through the work of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. Shower us once more with your grace that we might be renewed in your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join me in hymn number 61, Come Thou Almighty King.
Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. The proclamation of John the Baptist. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds today by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we might listen faithfully, that we might be open to your transformation, and that we might grow in your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. I was excited about getting to preach Baptism of the Lord Sunday. This is one of those high holy Sundays that I look forward to each year. I look forward to getting to say, remember your baptism. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Those are words that I look forward to saying every year. And I thought that this was going to be an easy re-entry back to preaching and I was wrong. Because Wednesday came along, and Wednesday was a day where we saw activities in our nation's capital that were evident of how much hurt there is and how much division there is in our country. And I kept thinking, what is missing with my sermon that it just doesn't feel right? And it didn't. And I started thinking about what are the images that I have reached for? What does the lectionary tell me? And once I started doing that, I got some new direction. Part of what was missing was the call to live differently. And the image that came to my mind was the movie Facing Giants. In this movie, the coach has an offensive lineman who doesn't believe he can do what the coach is asking him to do. So the coach blindfolds the offensive lineman, puts another player on his back, and tells him to crawl 10 yards. While the team watches, the lineman keeps saying, I can't do it. And the coach keeps saying, just a little further, just a little bit more. And the team watches as he passes that 10 yard mark and keeps going. And the coach continues to say, you're almost there, keep going. And he, when he finally lets the offensive lineman take his blindfold off and look back, 
he discovers that he has made a journey not of 10 yards, but of 100 yards. He went the full length of the field. He went the full length of the field with encouragement and with an image that he could do this. So what are we called to do? Went back to the lectionary to try to figure out what seems missing. The lectionary text for today that you did not hear include the Holy Spirit hovering over the creation in Genesis 1. The Holy Spirit hovers over God's new creation and brings new life into being. The text from Acts, Paul has followed Apollos and he has asked people about their baptism. Do you have the Holy Spirit? And they say no. They were baptized with water. And Paul declares they must be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I thought of how many times I've come into this sanctuary and sat down to look at this window. It is a window that pictures a dove hovering over creation. Now, it doesn't look like emptiness in this. All the red swirl looks more like chaos to me. And this week felt chaotic. There were a number of times that my prayer was for God to be over the chaos. And it dawned on me, that's what's missing. Every year we gather and we talk about remembering our baptism and we quickly focus in on God has washed our sins away in the waters of baptism. I'm clean and I can go forward. I remember what God is doing. And it's something we want to say. We want to say, hear God say, you are beloved. You are my beloved. Through the waters of baptism, you have become a part of this community of faith. You are part of the church. And it seems like often we would like for it to end with being baptized by water. But John makes it clear in this text that we are not just baptized with water. It is not about a water marked cross on our forehead or dipping our fingers in water or someone sprinkling water over us. It is about remembering our full baptism in water and in the spirit. We are baptized in water and the Spirit. That's what's different about Jesus' baptism. Jesus' contemporaries and John's contemporaries would have been accustomed to hearing of being washed clean, of dipping in pools to be cleansed. John took it away from the temple out into the wilderness a place where new things come into being, where we're separated from the old while the new comes into being. But John preached that there was one coming after him who would baptize with water and the Spirit. With water and the Spirit. And when he is baptized, the heavens are ripped open for the Spirit to descend upon and into him. We often question, did Jesus need to be baptized since he was not needing to be forgiven of sin? He willingly goes into those waters. Did Jesus need to be told he was God's son and that God was pleased with him? Jesus knew who he was. Do we know who we are? 
Have we sold ourselves short by focusing on being baptized in water and what we leave behind at the font or the river and forgotten what we take with us when we come out of those waters? I think maybe that's part of the issue. We have forgotten that the reason Jesus needs this affirmation is Jesus needs this affirmation to give him the strength that he needs for what is coming ahead. You see, immediately following Jesus' baptism in Mark's gospel of immediacy and urgency and one thing happens right after the other, As soon as we finish hearing this wonderful affirmation that God is pleased with Jesus, the Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness where he will be tempted. Jesus needed affirmation and strength to be empowered to face what was coming. In a wilderness where a new ministry was coming into being, For after his temptation, he would take yet another hard step and take the first steps of his earthly ministry that would lead to a cross, a cross that would make our forgiveness possible. The waters of baptism affirm this, and it is a means of grace in which we experience the power and presence of God with us And that power and presence of God transforms who we are. But it is not the absolute necessity because it is God's work. God has chosen to forgive and God has acted and is acting to not only forgive us of our sin but to empower us to follow Jesus on the way the way of a different kind of life that looks different than what we see every day. And it's kind of hard to imagine. Maybe we're much more like the blindfolded offensive lineman who thinks he can only go a little way and can't possibly look at what's ahead because he would never try. Maybe we need to hear God's affirmation. You are beloved and you have been claimed by God in the waters of baptism. God is pleased with you. Not so we can leave on the Sunday of the Lord's baptism feeling nice and warm and fuzzy like we've had a good hug as we've been welcomed into a new family. Instead, maybe we need that as that hug that shoves into us all the strength God can pour into us to walk a different way, to live differently. Oh my, on Wednesday, how I wished we all lived differently. I heard from people on both sides people who were hurt and frustrated at the way they were being considered because they supported people who did not feel heard. I heard from people who saw a Capitol Police force be overrun And it didn't look like they faced the same thing that their friends marching in Black Lives Matter marches faced. Do you hear that cry? I'm not being heard. I'm not being seen. Do you Do you understand that God is calling us to look through God's lens of love and live this out in a way that looks differently than the rest of the world? 
When I heard from folks on both sides of the issues that divide us as a nation, I found myself knowing where I might stand, but knowing clearly that I did not fully understand where other friends were. And the prayer that came to mind was the prayer of St. Francis. Those of you who follow me on Facebook know I posted it earlier this week. But the part of that prayer that kept coming to mind was the request for God to empower me to seek to console before I seek being consoled, to seek to understand before being understood, to seek to love one another before I seek to be loved for myself. It's one of those prayers that I find hard to pray. Because on Wednesday, it was too tempting for too many of us to want to say, here, understand me. Understand my political view. But that's not what we were being asked to really do. That's not what God asks us to do and calls us to do. God calls us to see beyond the political claims to the real hurt and pain of people of all stripes, all nations, all races. God calls us to see differently and to live differently. And that's why we need to hear the affirmation, you are my beloved with whom I am well pleased. Not just to feel good about ourselves, but to be empowered to walk in the ways of love that Christ challenges us to walk in. When Christ was asked what the greatest commandment was, he said to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. But Christ took it even further and to hold us to love our enemies or at least those we perceive as our enemies. Can I love my enemies? Can I love those who see the world differently than me? Can I seek to understand? Can I seek to console? Those are hard questions for me. We live in a world where we like to be right all the time. I'm one of those people. But there is only one path that is right, and that is following Jesus. And it asks me to go places I cannot go on my own. I wouldn't make it to the 10-yard line. I would find all of the excuses of why I could not rather than why I can. So I come in here and I look at a stained glass window of a dove hovering over the waters of creation and I read of a dove hovering over Jesus at his baptism and the beginning of a new covenant, a new journey with God. And I am reminded in the waters of baptism, I am also baptized with water and the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit hovers over and asks to come into me to empower me to live differently. And the Holy Spirit asks you to let the Holy Spirit in so that you might live differently. Today, it's an easy day to want to touch the waters and to hear that we are beloved. But today, we need to remember that the waters of baptism don't just welcome us into this community of faith 
And the architects of this church did a beautiful job. As you go out today, I invite you to look at the stained glass that you'll walk through. There's a font on one side and a shell with three drops of water. We don't have to touch the waters up here at the front. We can simply look as we walk through water. To remember that we have been baptized in water and the Spirit, not just to come into this place, but so that we can be empowered to go out and to live according to the way of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I wonder if we would all be better off if we were blindfolded. Maybe we would learn to love those that we don't want to see. Maybe we would learn to love without the judgment first. Whether I'm blindfolded or not, the Holy Spirit is there hovering over my life, asking for me to let the Holy Spirit guide me in the way of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit asks the same thing of you. Will you open your heart and let me empower you to live differently? May the Holy Spirit hover over each of us and turn us into a new creation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We now come to a time that has become special during the midst of COVID to me, our offering time. It has become much more about not just putting a gift in the offering plate. We have given our gifts out in the narthex or we will put our gift in as we leave the space or we will give online. But we have been intentional about setting aside time that we offer ourselves to God. So today during this time of offering, I invite you to remember your baptism, to be thankful, and to be open to how the Holy Spirit is asking you to live out this life.
Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, send forth your Holy Spirit. Hover over each of us in ways that create new life in us. New life that sees those others overlook. New life that hears the cries of those without power. New life that is empowered to love one another more fully. Empower us as a church to be a community that is a living example of your love and the transforming power of your grace, the assurance that your presence is with us and that your power removes our sin and prepares us to live in ways that are holy to you. I give you thanks for the many blessings that you have given us, for a new day, for sunshine, for our health, and we pray for all those who are struggling with their health, whether it's physical illness, broken hearts, mental anguish, emotional exhaustion. We pray that they might also feel your Holy Spirit hover over them and begin healing them. May your Holy Spirit heal us of that which causes division. May it empower us to begin each day with recognizing that your mercies are new and our sins can be washed away. But also guide us on a path that follows the way of Christ. We follow Christ by praying as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand and join me? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We
standing and join me in singing hymn 539, O Spirit of the Living God. <laughs> I encourage you as you leave today, look at the windows as you go out. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And remain open to the work of the Holy Spirit in and through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>